John Moolan. John is from Regional Development Australia. Small organisation. Um, basically, we have a federally elected board that's um, hand selected by the Deputy Prime Minister, that's signed off by uh, federal cabinet and the state cabinet as well. Um, these uh, 12 people that come from a wide variety of business on the Central Coast, I won't go through all the names, but you know a lot of these people. Um, our chairman is Phil Walker, which is also the chairman of the Mingara Group and uh, uh, heavily involved in politics on the Central Coast as well. Bob Ward, um, a oh, sorry, I've got Mr. Bob, sorry, <laughs> it's uh, Bob Ward, um, former uh, uh, Gospel Councillor and uh, been on the coast for a long, long time, so you probably know those names. I'm the CEO of the organisation. We have an Economic Development Manager, Louise Fisher, which if you haven't met yet, you will probably uh, over the next few months. She's out and about at the moment. And we have an Office Manager that looks after the day to day running. Our organisation is a bit unique. Um, we're funded really to help people like yourselves, uh, bring people together to talk about issues on the Central Coast, but probably more <laughs> importantly, to get people working together and work towards common goals. So a big part of what we do, we get people around the table, we get people discussing what the key issues are, what we're currently doing, what our capabilities are, and then seeing what we can do working together to um, create a better Central Coast. In 2014, we had a review of the organisation. There was, there was a change in government in Canberra. Um, and RDA Central Coast done a lot of stuff. We've done environmental projects, cultural projects. We, we've done some stuff around the homeless as well. Um, but as a new CEO coming into your, the organisation, um, as you would do in your own businesses, I, I started to ask questions about wh what do we stand for? What's our core business? And really when we looked at where the state and federal government was heading, what assistance the Central Coast needed. Our focus should have been around economic development. That's what our core business was. A lot of, lot of our backgrounds and skills is around business development. One of the big projects that we run is a project called REDES, uh, the Regional Economic um, Development and Employment Strategy. And again, it's a process of getting major stakeholders around, around the table. And in principle, it sounds pretty easy, but um, you'll see, I'll put up a um, chart uh, we've got a lot of organisations on the coast, all doing very similar things. And um, these are some of the government departments that uh, are, are funded by the state and the feds uh, to deliver um, big projects on the central coast and initiatives on the coast. Unfortunately, these organisations don't talk to each other very often. And when they do, it's usually ad hoc uh, and it's project based. What Red is, is designed to do is have a look at that strategic approach and put an overarching framework where we're all working together. And um, as I said, that's called Redders. We, um, one of the big projects that we've taken um, over the last two and a half years as part of Redders is developing a list of infrastructure priority about really focusing on what are the key enabling pieces of <laughs> infrastructure on the coast that will really get the Central Coast moving long term. We've also uh, got a lot better over the last two years about coordinating our data. We've created what we call the regional snapshot, and it's a data set, and it's available to everybody, it's on our website. Um, and it's independent data, it comes from 10 data sets, independent data sets, but everybody uses the same um, figures now. So when we quote figures on the central coast, at least we're getting that consistent approach. It's getting the state, federal, and local government working together, but also business and the community. And um, that's what we're funded to do. It's, as I said, it seems easy, it's challenging because there's a number of different objectives on the Central Coast. But what we've, we've really discovered over the last two or three years, there's some common themes, so we're starting to build projects around those themes. Our uh, big focus is around um, writing really good grant uh, applications and funding applications. Um, we've had almost $800 million come to the coast over the last two years. And that's about writing really good proposals, really good business cases, having good project plans. So we're really helping all levels of government, government write those project plans and also people like yourselves, uh, businesses and community groups and um, other industry bodies, when they're applying for, for funding, let's do it really, really well. Um, another interesting project we've been working on is a project called Art Central. Um, there's been a number of projects and um, $270,000 of state funding to fund projects around the arts. We've also got a small incubator um, set up uh, as part of a Business Central uh, building at Arimba. We're based at the Arimba campus. 
um, the university and it's about setting up that small incubator space for small business startups to be in a really supportive environment at a really low cost as well. So that's another part of my business that's going really well. One of the things that you also will hear uh, and read in the paper is there's a number of roadblocks on the coast. A lot of developers come to the coast or there's a lot of business that would like to move to the coast and they come across roadblocks, whether that's at a council level or a state or federal level. We're also a part of Reddit. Um, we've set up this thing called Enabling Task Force. So when we come aware of those projects, there was a large business up at Summersby that was almost ready to leave the coast over the last 12 months because they wanted to expand their business and because of environmental issues, they couldn't do that. At the same time, the state government of Adelaide was actively encouraging this business to move with some really good financial and tax incentives. We had to start working together to actually save that company. It was a number of jobs, uh, but probably uh, more importantly than that, it was the flow on benefit to the whole community. But getting everybody around the table and getting all those agencies working together, we kept that business on the coast. And through doing that, that goodwill has been communicated to other developers and we're starting to become known as an area that can start getting rid of those roadblocks. We've also subscribed to a data set called Economy, Economy ID. It's a leading um, information management company that specializes in data about regions. This is freely available, all this information on our website too. So if you're doing your business modeling, um, yeah, you're more, uh, you can use this data to, to, for, for your business plans. It talks about growth. It talks about the current demographics. You can go right down to suburb level. So if you're looking at growing your business, there's some great information there. But um, it's really helped us when we do um, the funding submissions to have really good supporting data. It's getting those projects across the line. One of the things that we're really passionate about, it's only a smaller program, is a tri school program that we run with the local schools, university and TAFE, and a number of other third party training providers. Um, it was on again uh, a few weeks ago. It was great. Get high, high uh, school students, year nine and ten students, actually trying a trade, actually getting their hands on uh, on equipment and actually um, talking to tradespeople. And it's amazing over the last couple of years where trades were a bit on the nose. People just wanted to go to university, or um, that they didn't think trades were really sexy. A lot of young people are really keen to start. Um, getting into the workforce by learning a trade and we're really passionate about that project moving forward. So we all want to spend some time this morning is where we're focused on over the next 12 months. A big part is supporting our, our new council. We've been great advocates uh, for the last 18 months about one council. We believe that's the right way forward for the Central Coast. As I said, I don't want to be critical about individuals or organisations because I don't think that serves a purpose. We, we should be forward looking, but we have missed so many opportunities on the coast uh, through squabbling between ourselves or just having a focus on one area and not another area. And I, I've got to be honest, when we're competing with Western Sydney, the Hunter, the Illawarra uh, and some other regions, uh, when the state government and the federal government look at funding those regions, they're looking for a big bang for their buck. So when you're competing with millions of people in Western Sydney or half a million people up in the Hunter or uh, down the Illawarra where they're talking five or 600,000 people, when Gosford goes down as a, a city or Warren goes down as a shire and we're talking about 150,000 people, you, have, you don't get the same hearing, you really don't. And um, if I was a state and federal government, I'd be wanting to fund regions that are working together as well. So having one council, I think it's a really good step. And we're, a project I want to touch on today is a, a food innovation project. Nine months ago, we were approached by Julie Goodwin. We all, all know Julie, the Master Chef Julie. And um, she had set up this underground network, a bit like yourselves, just passionate people that wanted to see something happen around food on the Central Coast. They were business owners, uh, they were entrepreneurs, but they were really struggling to get buying from, from government at all levels. And um, they were really struggling to make inroads. So what we've done, we went back and had a look at what all of these government departments were doing around food and it really surprised us. Each of those government departments in their strategic plans had a focus on food, whether it's through tr uh, skills and training or with Central Coast Area Health about getting higher nutrient foods in, into the healthcare system. So we mapped that all out and then we went back to, to the, um, the industry groups, people like yourselves, the Chambers of Commerce, uh, manufacturing connect all, all those um, uh, agencies around food and again there was so much activity but again no coordinated effort 
we then went back to industry and we spoke to farmers, people in hospitality, education, tourism, manufacturing and health. And there was a real passion about working with these other uh, areas so, and about doing something really big on the Central Coast. So the project that we've come up with is a Central Coast Food Innovation uh, Region. It's about bringing all those elements together, not taking over what people were doing, but making sure everyone was starting work together and really growing the Central Coast economy around food. So this, this whole project is around about building a, a collective of, of, of people. And it'll be a partnership between government, business and education and the community. It's about building that framework of collaboration and, and, and sharing. Our role in this is about broken those partnerships, applying for funding, making sure that the Central Coast gets a fair share of that money, because there's a lot, a lot of money around at federal and state level at the moment, and really make sure that those projects are delivering the right result. So there'll be five major projects, and there'll be a few people in this room that may be interested in some of these. Um, it's about developing a food innovation centre, about business development and attraction, um, about sharing and developing more R&D on the coast, a real focus on skills and education. Um, the great thing about the food industry, there's a low barrier of en entry um, in into that industry. So if, where we've got pockets of disadvantage on the Central Coast, we can really focus on getting those people into employment through the food industry and making sure that the Central Coast is seen as a food destination. We've been struggling with tourism and uh, differentiation in that tourism market for a long, long time. There's an opportunity to really promote ourselves as the home of good food. So we're really focused on helping growers, manufacturers, uh, restaurateurs, uh, food entrepreneurs to bring new products to market, really develop those products, and then really make, making sure things like food safety, food packaging, nutrition labels that are done really well, branding it all up and then exporting it either outside the state or outside their region and then taking it overseas to overseas markets as well. Business attraction and development, that's also a part of our charter, bring more business and um, industry to the coast. And it's been a challenge because when we start talking to business leaders in Sydney and overseas, they go, well, well why the Central Coast? Why should we come here and not, not Western Sydney or Illawarra or Hunter? And um, the, the biggest selling point for us, we've been cheaper and, and we are now north from Sydney and, and we shouldn't be ashamed of that. But from a marketing perspective, we we're really struggling to differentiate ourselves. So if we've got a real focus around food on the Central Coast, when we start talking to big food manufacturers, distribution companies, big logistic companies that also have a focus on food, there is a reason for them to come to the coast. They understand we, we appreciate their industry and we understand some of their needs as well. Big focus on R&D with the federal government at the moment, part of the innovation agenda. And um, we do R&D on, on the coast a little bit, and it's usually done by the big organisations and it's done in a commercial and confidence environment. So people like Mars, Sanitarium, the big guys um, on the coast, they're spending millions of dollars where we've got organic farmers uh, uh, up on the, um, the plateau that would love to do R&D but can't afford that, that type of investment. So we want to make sure that um, we build an environment where a lot of that R&D is shared, that everyone benefits, that the small guys have some input into it too because what they're doing on their farms can be just as important as a major international uh, manufacturer as well. Skills and education, as I said before, the barriers of entry in the food industry are really low. Uh, so we can get young people, especially in, in the work quite easily, if we build that industry, we can get people that want to um, get into management careers and uh, we can work through TAFEs and, and the university and, and third party training providers to really build up that industry really well. One of the um, issues that industry is having at the moment with training providers is we're pumping these young people out but they haven't got the skills that's relevant to, to the employees needs. So um, we also process the international uh, work visas and we get so many inquiries from the hospitality industry at the moment and we couldn't understand why TAFE's pumping out all these people and the university's pumping out all these qualified people with degrees and we're not employing those people but there was a mismatch and there was a lack of communication between the, the end user, the business and what the educational provider was actually teaching in these courses. So a big focus on this is bring again people around the table making sure that if we're putting 12 month to 4 year degrees um, in place that they're relevant to business. 
And finally, the food destination region. Uh, as I said, we really need to differentiate ourselves. For a long time, we've been promoting the Central Coast around our beaches and our hinterlands and our lifestyle, which is really nice, and I think that's why most of us live here. But I think we've got to be honest with ourselves as well. Anywhere from Sydney to Queensland and Queensland and beyond, have got similar beaches, similar lifestyle. Um, you don't go down the coast, the only difference is that water is a bit colder. Um, so we need to find that point of differentiation. So we've got some great food activities, we've got great restaurants. The growers up the mountain love to do food trails up there. We've got organic growers that can really promote um, to the um, day trippers out of Sydney. So if we can do something around food and restaurant tours and, and um, really getting people passionate about food, there's an opportunity. It won't be our only differentiation, but at least we'll have one. Let's flick through that. And I just want to finish quickly about what we saw overseas. Um, my chairman and myself we were invited to the International Economic Development Conference. And we get invited to these study tours all the time. And most of the time, we, we, we don't attend because they're not relevant to Australia. But in, internationally, people are seeing food as a driver for tourism, a driver for business, and a driver for economic growth. What, what's happened over the last 10 or 15 years, organically, their food industry has just exploded. And, um, and it's only been the last couple of years where they've done some studies and started to understand why. And it's around food entrepreneurship. So um, there's 500 food carts that have opened up in, in Portland City alone. And these food carts, there was initial fear by restaurateurs that was going to take over the restaurant scene and destroy their restaurants. And that hasn't been the case. It's created their own market. And the only people who have struggled is the chain food restaurants, the McDonald's and the KFCs, because these people sell food between four and eight dollars, and it's usually business people like us that are walking in between meetings. So people are still having their, their business um, lunches and a glass of wine in the restaurants, but this is a completely different market. And you usually set up in areas where um, there was no one going to these areas previously anyway. So great way to break that un unemployment cycle, get a young entrepreneur in the system, but. One of the takeaways was, well, again, maybe we need to look at a different way to encourage on entrepreneurs on the Central Coast. One of the biggest boom areas in that Pacific Northwest area is around craft beer. Um, the Pacific Northwest, which takes in those two states, has become one of the biggest craft beer manufacturers in the world. And it's a very different business model to what we, we see in Australia. And again, it's all around that entrepreneurship. The Portland Food Innovation Centre, uh, this is what we're really keen to see on the Central Coast as well, in partnership either with the University of Newcastle or the University of Western Sydney. Um, this is a place where the young entrepreneurs go and they get that assistance, um, they do their food branding. Probably more importantly, where they've had a lot of success was putting the Portland, Oregon brand on, on everything that they sold, their beer, their, their distilleries, their, their uh, fresh food and produce. And that's really helped Portland to get that national and international recognition as well. So I think there's opportunities on the Central Coast to have a look at how we can brand our food. And the last example I want to share with you is Pike's Market um, in Seattle. I don't know if anyone's been to Pike's Market. Um, it's now the 31st uh, most busiest tourist attraction in the world. It, it's a market, it's a food market, that's all it is. Uh, it's a big one, and it's a good one, but it's a th the 31st biggest tourism attraction uh, in the world. Um, it's the biggest place of commerce in the, uh, in the state of Washington. It's a local meeting place. Uh, so where tourists go um, just to meet and, and, and try um, like fresh food. Um, it's an incubator uh, for, for, for new business. So from our perspective, we'll put the bureaucratic hat back on. Um, when we're talking to the state and the feds, um, it's all about dollars and cents. So well, we've done the research and we know if we can create more growth for this area, what it means in regards to additional jobs, more economic development. So when we're applying for funding, we can actually show um, the state and the feds why they should assist in these type of projects. Um, we've got our first round of funding from the state government. It was only $50,000, but it's allowed us to start off a catalyst project. And it's about taking that first step, and it's about really connecting the growers uh, with the end users on the Central Coast. So I'll, again, I'll use the Central Coast Area Health example. They would love to use more Central Coast produce in the hospital system, but also in places like nursing homes and com community health centers. And the biggest restriction for them is cost and, and lo logistics. 
So um, I think there's opportunities. What we're doing around this food project is also looking at what we do locally around a lot of other services as well. Put your hands together and thank John. I appreciate your invitation. Thank you.